Hey guys, going on? My name is Bacon. Welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile. We have a very, very weird one for you guys today because today we have a Crystal Beast deck profile. But the reason this is a weird one is because this is not like the other deck profiles I put out. So far, I've put out a Raid Raptor Master Duel deck profile, a Cyber Dragon deck profile, and a Chimera Phantom Beast deck profile. Um, the Raid Raptor one was meant to be competitive for Master Duel. The Cyber Dragon one was meant to be competitive, but mostly for like local tournaments and stuff like that. And the Chimera one wasn't necessarily meant to be, uh, competitive, but with how Chimera's doing in the current meta, it's not like the best deck or anything, but it's definitely getting some love. So, this is completely different. This is a completely casual deck that I've put together and this is one of if not my favorite casual deck that I have made um I use only the crystal beast monsters I don't use anything else this is not a deck that goes for something like necro valley uh to the point where I don't even play a single um I don't even play any um field spells so therefore I'm not playing rainbow bridge of salvation there is a lot going on with this deck that you guys don't even really know about. Well, clearly you can see the deck list and you might know basically what the plan is. But the plan for this deck isn't to like be a uh, more so control deck. This isn't this deck does not play Conclave Control, although it can. As you can see, the very last card, we are playing one copy of Crystal Conclave. But the entire point of this deck is to actually go for the card you see right now on the left side of your screen, Ultimate Crystal Rainbow Dragon Overdrive. The goal is to get this card out on the field. And if you do that, then you're in a good spot. So let's get right on into the deck profile because there's a lot to talk about. So let's get right on into it. Right off the bat, we're playing three copies of Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. You can probably get away with just two copies of this card, but I really like the three because I like opening this card. It's not the best if you open it. You prefer, you would prefer not to open it, but I like the three copies of this card. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what this card does, if it's if this face-up card and it's a short-end monster zone, you can place it in your spell trap card zone as a continuous spell instead of sending it to the graveyard. All your Crystal Beast straight out ability. But this card also has the effect where you can only use each of the following effects of this card once per turn. Uh, where either when an attack is declared involving this card, you can um, uh, when an attack is declared involving a Crystal Beast monster, you can special this card from your hand, and you can banish this card treated as a continuous spell, especially on the level four or lower Crystal Beast monster from your deck, but negate its effects. And if you do add an ultimate Crystal monster from your deck to your hand, that's usually going to be used to get yourself a um, a level four and a search of, of Rainbow Dragon. Usually, what you're doing there's a bit of a one card combo, quote unquote combo. It's not really a combo, but you open up Sapphire Pegasus, normal summon Sapphire Pegasus, place Rainbow Dragon, activate Rainbow Dragon's effect to special summon a uh, Amber Mammoth, is what I usually go for, and add a Rainbow Dragon effect to hand, and then you have enough material to go for a rank four play. So it's obviously not a whole, a whole lot going on there, but it's honestly pretty decent in my personal opinion. Uh, very, very good card. I like it for in the hand for its special summon effect, but usually you're using it for its spell trap card zone effect to banish it, special level four, and then add a rainbow dragon. Speaking of which, we're playing two copies of Rainbow Dragon. We actually can summon Rainbow Dragon. In fact, we're supposed to be summoning Rainbow Dragon. We can get out this card turn one if our hand uh, allows it. This card is always treated as an ultimate crystal monster. Cannot be normal summon or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by having seven crystal beast cards with different names on the field or in the graveyard. The rest of, effect, the rest of its effects don't matter. All that matters is that first, it's summoning condition. Next up, three cops of Sapphire Pegasus. I mean, it's still probably the best uh, Crystal Beast, if we're being entirely honest. Uh, when this card is summoned, you can place a Crystal Beast card, a Crystal Beast monster, sorry, from your hand, deck, or graveyard, face up your spell, trap card, and it's a continuous spell, and it has the normal Crystal Beast effect. Ruby Carpuncle, two copies of this, and if, if when this card is special summon, special summon as many Crystal Beast monsters for, as possible for your spell trap card zones. And then we're also playing one Amber Mammoth, one Topaz Tiger, one Cobalt Eagle, one Amethyst Cat, and one Emerald Tortoise. Almost none of these effects are going to pop up. Amber Mammoth can redirect attacks to itself. Topaz Tiger against 400 when it declares an attack against an opponent's monster. Cobalt Eagle can target a Crystal Beast card you control placed on top of the deck. This one might come up to place a Sapphire Pegasus on top of your deck, but for the most part, you're not using this card's effect. Amethyst Cat can attack directly, but the attack you but the damage you deal is halved. And Emerald Tortoise can target a monster you control that attack this turn, change it to defense position. Mostly all of these effects suck and you're never going to use them. We're just playing them for the names. 
Next up, one copy of Foolish Burial. This is for the spell cards, and this is solely, solely here to give you an additional Crystal Beast name in your graveyard to allow you to summon uh, Rainbow Dragon much easier. Two copies of Foolish Burial Goods. This is only in here for Crystal Miracle because if we put Crystal Miracle in the graveyard, um, Crystal Miracle, if a Crystal Beast card is placed in your spell trap cards on one of those cards in the graveyard, you can manage to card place a Crystal Beast monster from your hand to your graveyard face, face up in your spell trap card zone as a continuous spell. So it just gives you an additional, uh, an additional name. Three copies of Golden Rule. This card is the newest inclusion to the Crystal Suite, and it is absolutely fantastic. Golden Rule, it's an equipped spell that has the effect where it's always treated as a crystal card, so you can always search it off of stuff like Rainbow Bridge of the Heart and Rainbow Bridge. Um, but this card also has the effect where you place two Crystal Beast monsters from your deck, face up your spell trap cards, others continue spells, then special summon a Crystal Beast monster from your hand or graveyard with a different name than those cards, and if you do, equip it with this card. When this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. Very, very powerful because it gives you two names straight from the deck while also allowing you to special summon a monster. The only issue with this, in my opinion, is that it um, it's an equip spell. So therefore, due to the fact that it's an equip spell, it says, and if you do equip it with this card, therefore, if you use it to special summon stuff like Sapphire, Pegasus, and Ruby Carbuncle, they will actually miss timing. So they won't be, they won't be able to act with their effects, which is the only unfortunate part about Golden Roll. I wish it didn't really specify that or equip cards had like a different thing to it. Um, but it is what it is. Three copies of Crystal Bond. For all intents and purposes, this card in this deck is essentially Pot of Greed. Basically, what does Pot of Greed do? It allows it to go plus one. Crystal Bond allows it to add a Crystal Beast monster from your deck to your hand and place a Crystal Beast monster with a different name from your deck face up your spell trap cards on this continuous spell. This allows it to go plus one. The only downside is that it's a once return, but it's a really, really good card for this deck. Three copies of Rainbow Bridge. Add whatever the frick you want to your hand. Who cares? One copy of Crystal Beacon. I kind of want to play more of this, but in practice, it's not the best thing in the world. Uh, less than especially when a Crystal Beast monster from your deck, but you have to have at least two Crystal Beasts in your Spell Trap Card Zone to activate it. Um, and when it comes down to playing this deck, you're actually not ending a lot of turns with two Crystal Beasts in your Spell Trap Card Zones. So it's a little unfortunate, but I think it's at least good as a one of that you can draw into and like your opening hand. And then once you get the two monsters in your Spell Trap Card Zone, you can just activate Crystal Beacon and go off from there. Three copies of Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates. By just revealing an ultimate crystal monster in your hand, you can either add a Rainbow Bridge card from your deck to your hand or special summon a Crystal Beast monster from your hand, deck, graveyard, or Banished Zone. I think it has the Banished Zone. No, just hand, deck, graveyard. Never mind. But um, uh, you can activate both effects if you control an ultimate crystal monster, but you're never really doing that. You're really only using this card to um, reveal an ultimate crystal monster in your hand to either add a rainbow bridge or special a crystal beast if you already have a rainbow bridge. You will always be activating this card to get a rainbow to get rainbow bridge to the heart unless you already have rainbow bridge to the heart in which case you're unless in which case you are special summoning a crystal beast. Uh, three copies of rainbow bridge to the heart speaking of which this card is absolutely insane. This is probably the best piece of legacy support that Crystal Beast has ever gotten. This card is just absolutely unbelievable. This card has the effect during your main phase, you get an additional normal summon of a Crystal Beast monster. That is absolutely unbelievable for Crystal Beast. But it also has the effects where during your main phase, you can destroy a Crystal Beast card you control or in your hand. And if you do add a Crystal Spell Trap from deck to your hand, and if a Crystal Beast card is placed in your Spell Trap card zone, even during the damage step, you can target one card your opponent controls, return both that card and this card to the hand. So it's a bounce, it's a searcher, and it's an additional normal summon. Sign me up. Absolutely fantastic card. Three copies of Dark Hole. This is a very interesting inclusion in my opinion. So you might be asking, well, why are we playing Dark Hole over something like Raigeki? The reason is it destroys our Crystal Beasts, which is good for us because if the crystal beasts get destroyed they actually go to the uh, spell trap card zone rather than the graveyard so that's the entire reason i'm playing dark hole over something like raigeki i just needed basically three cards to fill a slot and to me dark hole was was the one i could have ran raigeki i went with dark hole solely for that fact solely for the fact that it puts your crystal beast in your spell trap card zone so you don't necessarily lose them and it could be helpful for going for something like a crystal beacon because if you activate dark hole we have two crystal beasts you get both of them in your spell trap card zone activate crystal beacon and go off from there for the traps you're running two copies of crystal miracle i already told you about its graveyard effect but it's non graveyard effect is just an omni negate when you when a spell trap card zone when a trap if i could speak when a spell trap card or monster effect is activated you destroy a crystal beast card you control and they get the activation and destroy that card very very powerful card 
Uh, Crystal Conclave as well. This is what most people know uh, Crystal Beast for, with Conclave Control. This card has the effect, that's a continuous trap card, that has the effect where once per turn, if a face of Crystal Beast monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon a Crystal Beast monster from your deck. And also, you can send this face-up card from the field to the graveyard, target a Crystal Beast card you control, and one card in the field, and return them to the hand. Very, very powerful. I usually don't search it, because I'm usually going for, like, a, um, I'm usually going for a huge combo to get out uh, Ultimate Crystal Rainbow Dragon Overdrive in the very first turn. So usually I'm not searching out Conclave because it's Conclave is good to search out if you don't have Overdrive uh, in your opening hand. But if for in instances that you do have Overdrive, I do I go for Overdrive over Conclave. Speaking of which, let's talk about Overdrive. So for anyone, do you guys even know what this card does? This was a card in the structure deck for anyone who doesn't know. But a lot of people just apparently didn't play it because, you know. Necro Valley control was just too powerful, I guess, in Crystal Beast, which, you know, fair. But this card has the effect. It must be special summon for your extract during a duel with you special summon an ultimate crystal monster by banishing the above monsters from your field and our graveyard. The monsters you have to banish are an ultimate crystal monster and seven crystal beasts, which might seem like a tall task. Trust me, it's actually not that bad. Um, and you will be able to get to this card about half of your games just with all the support. And I'll show you a quick combo for that as well. But this card also has the effect where while seven or more of your Crystal Beast monsters with different names are banished, this card gains 7,000 attack. I'll be honest, that effect usually doesn't matter unless you're going second. Um, a lot of the times you're actually not getting um, to 11,000. You're not getting that effect um, because it doesn't say you have to banish differently named Crystal Beast monsters. So the moment you get seven monsters total, you can go, you just bring this guy out because he has a second effect. If this card is not battled this turn, quick effect, you can trip this card, shuffle as many cards on the field as possible into the deck, and if you do, special summon as any number of your banished Crystal Beast monsters. It, it, it spins everything into the deck, and then you summon five. Unbelievable effect. Next up, one copy of uh, Rainbow Over Dragon. This is in situations where we're able to summon Rainbow Dragon, but not Overdrive, because Over Dragon can distribute the Rainbow Dragon, and then it can use its effects in the same turn. Usually at the same time, it's not amazing, but it's fine. I think this is a good card for you to go into if you can't get to overdrive. Um, and the reason you won't sometimes might be might not be able to get to overdrive is because overdrive has the effect um, where you have to banish the above monsters from field or graveyard. If the crystal beast monsters are in your spell and trap card zone, they are not counted as monsters, therefore you cannot banish them as the cost of overdrive summon condition. So for those instances where you do have seven or more crystal beast cards on the field or in the graveyard and are able to summon rainbow dragon, but they're in, but some of them are in your spell and trap card zone, so you can't go for overdrive, Overdragon's a good middle ground for that. This card has the effect where it must be fusion summoned or special summoned by attributing one level 10 ultimate crystal monster. And once per turn, you can banish a crystal beast monster from your graveyard. This card gains attack equal to the banished monsters until the end of this turn. The reason why I like this is because if we go for something like a rainbow dragon and then go for overdragon, that gives us two ultimate crystal monsters that we can banish for the cost of an overdrive. The reason why I think that's so powerful is because if we don't do that, if we go for like a rainbow dragon and then don't go for overdrive and then we use the rainbow dragon as like link material as an example, and our opponent does something like activates called by the grave on our rainbow dragon, guess what we can't do anymore? We can't go for overdrive because they banished our rainbow dragon, so we can't banish it for the cost of the overdrive. So, just giving yourself a second ultimate crystal monster in the field, uh, it's just very, very powerful. Even if they called by the Rainbow Dragon, you still have the Over Dragon with which you can use to actually do some stuff. For the rank fours, we're just playing basically some generics. Abyss Dweller's in here, Baguska's in here. Dugaris is unbelievable in this deck. Dugaris gets you out of positions where you've bricked and are unable to find your rainbow bridge cards, um, which are like the most important parts. You have a you have a lot of ways to get to your rainbow bridge cards. You have awakening, you have rainbow bridge into awakening, and and you just have normal rainbow bridge to be able. To, you have nine cards that get you there, but on the ins on the small chance you don't actually hit any of those nine cards. Dugaris can get you out of it. This card has come up so many times to the point where I kind of wanted to play two copies of this card, if I'm being entirely honest. But for now, we're just playing the one copy. Lightning Chidori, we can make this with either um, two Sapphire Pegasus or a Sapphire Pegasus and a Cobalt Eagle. Uh, if this card is like Z7, target a set card your opponent controls, return it to the bottom deck, and then once a turn, detach the material, target a face-up card your opponent controls, return to the top of the deck. Very, very powerful card. 
Uh, it's not a quick effect, so it's not the best thing in the world, but for instances where you're just trying to go for a more uh, control strategy, this card is very, very powerful. Tornado Dragon, just for some spell and trap card control. Heartland Draco for moments where you see you have a, a, an OTK potential. Utopia into uh, Utopia the Lightning. We're not playing Utopia Double for the Utopia OTK, but I do like at least going for Utopia the Lightning to at least have a 5,000 attack point beater. I think it's good enough. Uh, one copy of Break Sword. Usually, we're never going into this card, but it's helpful for situations when you want to just get a card off your opponent's field. The reason we're usually never going for it is because we're also playing one copy of Cherubini, which can send a level three from deck to grave to just give you additional name. Overall, I think Cherubini is a better version of Break Sword in this deck. Um, Break Sword doesn't give you an additional name; it just pops the guy. But Cherubini actually sends a level three from deck to grave, and then you can use Cherubini as Link Material, which is very powerful. And then we're just playing a good slate of Nightmares: the Unicorn, Phoenix, and Cerberus. However, I think I actually am going to go ahead and drop the servers for just a copy of ip mascarena i think we're gonna go for ip just because going for ip at the if you're going first ip is just a really good card to then just go for a unicorn usually um if you do go for an ip mascarena your usual end board is actually going to be an overdrive an ip and a uh, dugaris so you can just use the ip and the, and the dugaris to go for a unicorn during your opponent's turn to just uh, spin one thing and if you don't want to spin if you don't want to activate uh overdrive yet uh, so that's uh, powerful situations, but that's it for the deck profile. Let's get into a quick combo. So this is a situation where we don't actually open up any of the cards that get us into like Rainbow Dragon stuff, but we are in a perfectly fine situation because we're going to be able to go for a copy of Crystal Bond. We're going to add a Sapphire Pegasus from deck to our hand, and we're just going to place any of the level threes because why not? We already have this, the Sapphire Pegasus, which is just going to allow us right here to go for a place uh yeah rainbow dragon and we're just gonna go ahead and activate the rainbow dragon we're gonna special summon out the topaz tiger because we have the amber mammoth in our hand and we're gonna add the rainbow dragon now in this situation this is a big money no whammy kind of thing but we're gonna go ahead go for a dugaris activate the effect draw two discard one we're gonna do that exact thing, same thing and unfortunately in this situation we don't actually hit it but we can still go for a bit of a control route here uh, we're actually going to, in this case, banish the, uh, we're going to discard the Rainbow Dragon because now we can go for a copy of Golden Rule. We're going to go ahead and place an Amethyst Cat and a Cobalt Eagle from our deck straight up from our, uh, just right there. And we're going to go for now the Rainbow Dragon. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot we can do here. We do have currently six names which is so good, but unfortunately we're not quite there. Six names is just not enough to be able to do this, which is very unfortunate. We can go for um, a like IP Mascarina as an example, uh, but for the most part, I think this is kind of bad because of the Dugaris and not working. We do have a Crystal Miracle, so we do have a negate, but for the most part, this hand is kind of a dud. This will happen at times, but that one is not a dud. Let's get into another quick uh, test hand. Here's a situation in which we we have we have it. So we have the awakening. So this is just going to basically be the exact same thing. We're going to add, add a sapphire pegasus. We're going to place the amber mammoth straight up in our spell trap card zone, and we're going to go for a sapphire pegasus. We're going to place the rainbow dragon. And we're going to activate the rainbow dragon. We're going to special the topaz tiger, and we're going to add a rainbow dragon. In this situation, we don't need to do anything with the uh, dugaris because we already have our rainbow bridge so we're going to go ahead with the rainbow bridge go for a rainbow bridge to the heart let's add that to our hands and we're going to activate that rainbow bridge to the heart with this we're actually just going to pop the amber mammoth and we're going to add from our deck to our hand mm, what do we really want we've already used the crystal bond we've already used the awakening golden roll is probably the correct answer here um but we can also go for a copy of conclave we don't need the crystal miracle because we already have that i think golden roll is probably the correct choice here let's go for the copy of golden roll uh, in this situation, let's go now for the golden roll. We're just going to place a Emerald Tortoise and a, let's go, Cobalt Eagle. And we're going to special summon out the copy of Amber Mammoth. This is a totally fine uh, situation for us to be in. We're going to go for the Dugaris. Just use an, actually, let's use the, let's not use the Sapphire because it's quite yet. That will also free up a spot in our spell trap card zone because the golden roll no longer is here. Draw two, discard one. Let's go ahead and do this. Hopefully we hit at least one name. We do exactly that. We hit, we hit a name. We can also go now for, we can also actually discard the Crystal Miracle if we want and then go for a Dark Hole, weirdly enough. Uh, just to give ourselves an additional name. I don't really think that's the right option now. We want an additional normal summon right now because currently we have one, two, three, four, five. We have the sixth right here in hand. 
Um, I think we're gonna just go ahead and discard an Awakening. Just because we have two in our hand. Let's use our additional normal summon to normal summon our copy of uh, Ruby Carbuncle. And now in this position, we're actually going to go for a Link Blight. We are going to go for the IP Mascarina here. We're just going to use the Ruby Carbuncle and the Sapphire. I should not have used Sapphire Pegasus, actually. That was a mistake on my part. I should have. Ah, it's not that bad because I can just, uh, yeah, that's not that bad. Uh, I was going to say I should keep the Sapphire Pegasus because then I can use Crystal Miracle to destroy it and place it in the Spell Trap Guard Zone. But as long as we still have, like, Cobalt Eagle and Emerald Tortoise right here in our Spell Trap Guard Zone, that's totally fine. So this is the situation. Unfortunately, once again, we were unable to get to our copy of Overdrive. Again, this will happen. So far, Dugaris has not been kind to us. We have not been able to get into really, really powerful uh, cards, unfortunately. But it's an option. Um, it, it's We don't necessarily have a bad hand right now we do have a rainbow bridge of the hearts that um if a crystal base card is placed in a spell trap card zone which unfortunately actually doesn't look like it's going to be a thing uh however we do have the ip mask right now that can go into our copy of unicorn to then just uh spin one of our opponent's cards and then we also have the crystal miracle to get at least in the gate out uh so let's do one more quick test hand before we call it quits right there so uh, another situation which we actually don't quite open it, but let's just go ahead. Crystal Bonds, we're just going to add from deck to hand. Let's just go for a... I don't know. Let's go for a freaking Emerald Tortoise. Why not? And we're just going to place a copy right here of Rainbow Dragon in our Spell Trap card zone. We're going to go for Sapphire Pegasus. And we're going to place one of our level 4s. So we're going to place a Cobalt Eagle. Activate the Rainbow Dragon. We're going to Special Summon a Amber Mammoth. And we're going to add a Rainbow Dragon. Let's go ahead and go for that Zugaris once more. Hopefully this time we actually hit something that's that's good. Uh, we don't. <laughs> so far, I've not been doing a good job of showing just how good Zugaris can be in a deck like this. This has not been very good. We do have a Crystal Beacon, but unfortunately we do not have an additional Normal Summon. So that actually will be the end of our turn. Very, very bad opening hand right there. Uh, doing a bad job right here at actually showing it. But unfortunately, I am starting to run out of time. So that is going to be it. But at the end of the day, you do see what this deck can actually do. Your entire goal is to go for the copy of Overdrive. Um, if you can ever get into that position. Unfortunately, with the Dugaris, I wasn't able to get into that position as you saw. But you were still able to end on somewhat decent boards. Again, this is a casual deck. It's not supposed to be anything crazy in the meta, okay? That I just want to make that clear. <laughs> This is supposed to be casual. It's not supposed to be a meta-defining deck or anything like that. It's supposed to be a deck that you play with your friends at the dinner table, as an example. Um, and I think this does a good job at exemplifying that. Maybe you think for a casual deck, something like Baguska, Abyss Dweller, and the Nightmares are um, too annoying. And if that's if that's the case, you can just drop them. Like They're not necessary. I'm only putting them in. The only one I would say was, is really necessary in the extra deck would be uh, Overdrive and Dugaris. For the most part, nothing else really matters. Cherubini, I guess, also kind of matters. Um, but not so much that I would even consider like showing how much is it right now. It's an $8 card. Um, I mean, $8 might not be too expensive for some, for some people. For a casual deck, $8 might be way too much for somebody. So... That's basically it, though. That is going to be it for the video. I really hope you guys did enjoy this deck profile. Uh, if you did, make sure you tap the like button and subscribe for more. Hope to see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.